It is the first day of the 2019-2020 season. Child FC have just been promoted, having won a League and Cup treble in the previous campaign. With a smattering of new faces and an away trip to the much-fancied Balkan to deal with, manager Peter Barkley has just raced back from his holiday in the US to rally his team. All right, lads. Take a seat for me, just a couple of seconds. Obviously, I've been away for feels like a lifetime now. Um, so today, I just thought I'd get everyone along because I haven't seen some of you play recently. So even in the warm up, I can take a look at some of you, and it's just easier for me to have everyone here. There will be some people disappointed. Um, it's a very competitive squad this year and team, as you all know. And I've just done what I feel is right today to get us three points. Um, anyone unhappy, put me in the headlock, beat me up. Whatever you want to do, we'll do it after the day. We won't do it today. So I just ask that we're all positive, whether you're starting on the bench, in the squad, um, positive for today, after the day, call me, have a chat, and we can go through everything. Simple message, we're solid defensively, we're hard to break down, but we're expansive, and we're going to enjoy the football. When we get that ball today, keep it moving across the pitch, keep shifting around, and enjoy it, and show our quality. And I said in that message, I come here full of confidence for you boys today. If you do what we've done all season and you put in the work rate, we've got the quality in here to see this through. All right? When you're ready, out on the balls in the square. The warm-ups are a key part of Barks' process and the manager is not entirely happy with what he's seeing from his squad. Crazy day, obviously, I've just landed from Chicago about an hour ago, so I'm not sure if I'm more jet-lagged than the players at the moment. We just had a bit of a lacklustre warm-up. Going to go in and get them going because it's, it's really flat. Um, yeah, not happy with that this last half an hour or so. I'm not happy. I don't know if it's my mindset being a bit jet-lagged coming back this morning, but I think we're flat. I think we're flat in there. I think we're looking at them, we're talking about them, we're worried about my decisions and what I've done. Everything's on me. My decisions are all on me. I've put this team out, it's on me. The results are on me. Because this means a lot. This is eight weeks hard work today. Now I expect the first minute of this game, we go out fighting for everything. And if we don't come away with three points today, we failed. We failed. Because that's our aim, that's our goal. So I want all the subs out in the white tops with me, and I want all the starting 11 out there with me. Let's go. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> King. Start, yeah? Here we go, Gaffer. All the best, mate. Cheers, pal. Thanks. Some tough calls today with you lads on the bench. Honestly, you get the opportunity, so you, you take it. What? Yeah. Well, that's why he made that decision. <laughs> 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 Let's go to news! Charwood's run in the previous season stretched 24 consecutive wins in all competitions, but the quality in the Mid Sussex Premier Division promises to test them much harder than they've become accustomed to. Still, they start brightly against Balkham, and Kevin Locke very nearly earns a penalty, although he was correctly judged to have been fouled outside the box. Red! Our referee bottled it. Bottled it, he's a yard in. Balkham are keen to test their newly promoted opponents and press high up the pitch to good effect. And as Charlwood will find out over the course of this season, teams in the Mid-Sussex Prem nearly all have a long thrower. Throw bamboozling the Charwood defence, Edward Murrells sweeps home. In the ensuing celebrations, a Balkan defender cries, Welcome to the Prem. The goal seems to alleviate the pressure that stops Charwood from playing their passing game, and their response is positive. New signing Mike Smith starts pulling the strings in midfield. Meanwhile, Kevin Locke does his best hold up play up top. With half-time approaching, star winger Jamie Liddell draws a foul on the left-hand side. Liddell plays his free kick deep to the far post, where Adam Lippitt arrives.
Balkan react positively to the equaliser and they pen Child back. A mazy run opens Child up and Edward Murrells bags a second to give the home side a half-time lead. Yeah, he's a decent so player. I am giving, we're giving him a bit more. Decent player. So this, this whole game reminds me of that cup final because I'm looking at Lockie and Lockie's so isolated. We've, they've stretched us, we're so deep and I really want us up to the halfway line so we can squeeze the play. We haven't, we haven't rolled the ball out to full backs enough at all. We haven't actually got the ball out and played. When we've played and moved the ball, we've opened them up, lads. We really have. And I, and I mean it, I know we're a better side than them. They're fitter, they're fighting for things, they've got a decent nine and they all want it. But we haven't really shown any real quality and it's how I felt turning up and I can't work out if it's my jet lag or you lot and I'll go home and reflect and I might be totally wrong. But from the moment I've turned up today, it hasn't felt like the first league game of the season. It's felt like a jolly up. They got a long throw, you got to gobble it Dean or you've got to gobble it Zach. Alright, throws are difficult because they're flat but that's the danger. I, I completely agree. But I'm the last point of call. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? If I'm coming for it, it's all, it's all or nothing. If it's in that six-yard box, though, you've got It's not in the six-yard box, though. But when it's in the six-yard box, you've got to come. Look. I'm coming through three of our players. Who yeah. Collectively. Collectively. Collectively, Zach. Wham. Collectively. I'm the last result. Because you're all about 50% of what I believe you are. And all of you, pretty much. We've all having a bit of an off day. I'm taking three off in ten minutes. It's down to you in this next ten, all right? Child fly out of the blocks in the second half. The first chance falls to Liddell, who sees his effort deflected wide. Liddell has awoken. His drive into the Balkan penalty area is particularly dangerous, given his propensity for falling over in a convincing fashion. Stephen Payne's penalty is so convincing, manager Peter Barkley very nearly gets in the car and drives off. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. All over, much better! All over, much better! Balkan cannot contain Liddell, who then fashions another chance for Payne. Liddell's next free kick then forces a Balkan defender to wrestle Child's Tom Tennant to the ground, although the ref didn't see the blatant tug on his arm. Child is smelling blood, and the pressure continues to grow, leading to the best move of the game. Stephen Payne's driving run sets up new signing Justin Ford and the winger slips the ball into the bottom corner. The late summer sun and the lack of match fitness begins to take its toll on the team. The home side are desperate to recover parity, but Child's ability to keep the ball frustrates them. And it's the visitors who look more like scoring. Kevin Locke's effort from close range forces what might well be the save of the season. With 10 minutes to go, Ben Herdman drives forward into the penalty area. Whether or not the foul is inside the box is debatable, but the defender avoiding a red card is simply bemusing. Adam Lippitt's free kick is parried by the keeper and Balkan survive another attack. As the clock ticks down, Justin Ford grows tired of being fouled. The game threatens to boil over when a Balkan striker inadvisedly lunges studs first at Child's new goalkeeper Zach Rice. 
Both players are fortunate not to receive a red card from a referee who just wants to get to the end of the game. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much, sir. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Hads. Superb. Come here. Superb. Sit in centre half, no complaining. You don't set them in. Honestly, mate, you epitomise it. You epitomise it, mate. Superb. Superb. I take that. I don't know what I said or what we said or what we did, but it worked, didn't it, mate? It's like I know where we should be, and we we start here, yeah. and it takes a reality check, doesn't it, for them to actually go. Well, this is where we should be. Hi, boys. Boys. Um, absolute game of two halves. That was completely different, and all it was is your mentality to be on the front foot. As soon as I walked out here. I could sense it, and you changed. Now, whether we were overawed, maybe that was the wrong way of me doing it, and maybe you're a bit nervous, I don't know. I don't know. And I'll reflect on what I've said and done. But whatever happened, that is the level of this, this premiership. They are going to come at us. We can't be out on a Friday night. We can't be half asleep. We can't be half at it. We can't be cheating, all right? And second half, second half, you all raised it. It was a completely different game. They couldn't live, they were lost. They couldn't live with us. We created so many chances. And for their five to look at one of us in the eyes and tell us, welcome to Prem. Well, I tell you, welcome them, Joel. Do that! Well done, boys. Yeah, I'm jet lagged. I mean, I don't know if it's my mindset or, or their mindset, really. I don't know. I, I was on holiday buzzing for this game all week, thinking about what we're going to do, how we're going to play. And it was just... Can't put my finger on it. It just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel right from the start. Today. Yeah, I'm buzzing. I'm proud of them second half. You know, they showed what we're about. It was just, you know, wake up corner a bit worrying that first start. It was worrying because I've not seen us like that ever in all the four years. I've never seen us that flat, that quiet, that put off by the surroundings. Maybe it is going up to the Prem and you're thinking, can we do it? Are we able to compete at this level? Maybe there's an element of that. And I'll reflect, I had a go at them. Maybe I should have praised them up at that point, but I decided to to give him a kickstart, which obviously didn't work before the game, so I'll reflect on, on what I said and, and what I did as well. Non-league football may have stopped, but a bunch of amateurs will keep on going. Subscribe to get a new adventure every single week.